Ashley Perona, welcome to Paper Napkin Wisdom. I'm really excited to meet you. I've known about you for a long time through Karen Harold, but it's finally to meet the uh, finally meeting the legend. It's exciting. Thank you. Ah, thank you so much. I'm so excited to be here. So thank you for having me. Yeah, thrilled. So you shared a well. I've got to say, actually, listen. If you're just listening to the podcast, go to the website, click on this napkin because it's one of the most beautifully and uh, pictured and nicest napkins that we've ever had. So explore, experience, evolve with this beautiful heart and a tail that looks like a couple airplanes. Um, so why did you share that with me? Yeah, so it's kind of funny, funny little story. I was with um, a partner, my ex-partner of like seven years, and I just always wanted to like push the envelope. I was kind of in corporate America. We were doing our thing in our relationship and I always wanted to travel and things were great with us. And then they slowly started to unravel. And it's funny, he actually got me this piece of jewelry and it had a custom engraving in it with a heart and it said, ever wander. He's like, I just feel like you're never going to be content and you're always going to want to be wandering. And in a way, I was like, is that like a backhanded <laughs> like compliment? But I but something like stuck with me. And, you know, I ended up ever wandering out of that relationship, but the name kind of really stuck. So when Cameron and I, my now husband, uh, decided to go travel the world, I decided to make my travel brand ever wander because I feel like I will always be wandering in this world because I have an insatiable curiosity of other cultures, other countries, and trying things for the for the first time. So I created a travel brand called Ever Wander Travel, and the tagline is explore, experience, evolve. So, so I love how... Um... Ever wander became this, you know, this jewelry piece. This thing has become like a, a brand for you, and and ever wander is has been the way. Now you don't just travel the world, right? Like let's just like it's not like you just travel and and you go on vacation from time to time. You travel. You're nomads. You guys travel constantly. Uh, what what is that like? Like what what is yeah, what is that like? How do you how do you bring stuff with you? Like, how do you take books? I have so many questions. <laughs> yes, right. Um, I will definitely tell you after doing it for three straight years now, like it it's not for the faint of heart, and it's not for everyone. And it's funny when I first was embarking on this whole journey, I thought that travel was the answer to a lot of people's problems. And after going out and experiencing travel in a very rough way, especially like in Colombia, even though it ended up being amazing, um, I was like, yeah, this is not for everyone. This is not for the faint of heart. You have to be thinking on your feet, being resourceful, down with being uncomfortable in weird situations all of the time. And so um, I do think travel is amazing and you can pick and choose the way you want to do it. Like there's so many different flavors of tra travel, kind of like Baskin Robbins ice cream flavors. Um, but we just chose one that really made sense to us because we wanted to fully immerse ourselves. So um, I actually sold my house and my car in 2020. I had my ticket to Japan. Cameron was not actually going to be coming with me at first. He was just going to be visiting because his youngest son was still at home in Vancouver. And uh, like April 27th, 2020, I had my ticket to Japan and everything just like blew up because of, you know, our little, our little friend. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I kind of got stuck in the United States and did a couple of road trips but then Cameron, um, his son ended up going to school in Montreal. I know you're in Ottawa. He's yeah. at Concordia. And then we decided to take off together September 2021. But in regards to just like resilience and planning and logistics, I'm a super detailed person. My entire career is in Salesforce. So I used to build amazing databases and process automation and analytics for big companies. Like I left Ticketmaster running their product and engineering team for Salesforce. 
And so I've applied a lot of the uh, detail oriented aspects to our travel life because that's my job. I'm the captain of our bucket list dream life and I'm the captain of the vision and Cameron is essentially the engine. Yeah, <laughs> so like, that's, that's amazing. So, it doesn't work without one of us, but yes, I do plan very far in advance. And like right now I'm in Arizona, my poor sister, she's kind of like my Amazon distribution warehouse. But like three weeks ago, I had to start ordering all of this stuff because I actually don't know when I'm going to be in the States again. So I have all of these boxes here and I'm going to have to unpack them all. I put all of my supplements in like clear baggies. I mark them to save space. I have like protein shake stuff. I have peptides, I have hormones. So me staying healthy on the road is like my number one priority. So it does require a lot of forethought. So, so, so you know, you got to some place that I was going to ask you about, because I know that health and, 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 you know, taking care of yourself is really important to you. I, I've seen that journey for Cameron as well. But but I really like he says that you're the quarterback of this in your life, in in your lives, and that's amazing. So I want to get to that in a second. But you said something at the beginning of this that I thought was really in interesting. You said a lot of people think that travel is the answer, but you also talked about curiosity. So isn't like travel like the question? Like travel is a great question. It makes you question your perception of the world. It makes you question. You, you know, your preparedness, you're leaning into some strengths as you, as you experience these opportunities around you. But if you didn't lean into it that way, wouldn't, wouldn't you miss some of that experience? Right. So like travel is a great question. It asks you a lot of questions along the way. Is, is that what you've observed? Is that what learning you're doing when you're doing this journey? Absolutely. Like, and I think that travel has probably impacted me in more ways than I can even think at the surface. Like, I think it's something that just gets embodied or ingrained at a, a cellular level. Um, it just really opens up the eyes of humanity. And we're basically spiritual beings having um, like a human experience. And in the US, you know, Cameron is Canadian, I'm American. We just were not loving the polarizing divisiveness of politics. And it's like, you're either with us or against us. And, you know, we're just of the mindset of that. We're all human. We're all beautiful. It doesn't matter where we came from. It doesn't matter what color we are. It doesn't matter the language we speak. We all emote we're all the same. And so travel has really opened my eyes to that. We're all going through similar experiences, challenges, amazingness, and just leading with like heart first and love. And I love going into these countries and doing more obscure local things versus doing the traditional touristy. Don't get me wrong. We do a lot of the touristy stuff reason. There's a reason it's touristy, but I also love doing uh, a lot of things that are off the beaten path to really connect with locals and get fully entrenched in the culture to see how different people live. Yeah. It's really, you know, it's, you know, it's, it's amazing, especially at this time and what's going on right now globally, but certainly domestically in the United States you know, it is a very polarizing time, but what's really interesting, the more you travel is, isn't it interesting? The less polarizing it is, it, it, the more in this global village, we start to, we start to realize that we're part of this global village instead of, yeah. you know, really sort of fighting each other about these little fiefdoms, these little kingdoms that don't matter. Right. Isn't, isn't that, is that been your experience? That's I mean, totally 60 been countries, my experience. Right? Like, yeah, I'm like, I'm at 60, Cameron's at 74. Um, we've done 51 together since 2018. Wow. And, you know, it, it makes me sad that the news in America in particular has gotten like so theatrical. It's like they, they have the like super intense voice with the super intense background music and dun 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 and it's like yeah. so dramatic and like if it bleeds it leads so they're not telling all of the amazing things are happening in the world they're telling all the bad things that are happening in the world and 
I can tell you that, you know, we're probably not going to go to certain in areas right now, given what's happening in the world. But every other country that we've been where they're not in the middle of some conflict, we have been like welcomed with open arms. And what we like what we see on the news couldn't be further from the truth of how we feel when we visit all of these different different countries, no matter where they are, like Africa or Asia. And we also spend a decent amount of time in the Middle East. Um, so I just wish that we could paint the world in like a more harmonious picture because all the citizens when we go are quite nice if you're very, um, yeah, you're not rude or obnoxious. Well, if you're not screaming at them. Yeah, <laughs> right? <laughs> if, 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 you're not, if you're not screaming at them, it's amazing how nice people are. Yeah. So, so in this in this journey and this journey to i love the way you said it you know we're we're um spiritual beings experiencing life through our bodies and and as you're experiencing this you've taken really great care of your body and uh, you know so where this came up for me today is i'm i'm i came back in from the gym and i'm mixing my protein shake version 2 is sitting here and and then I'm getting myself on this. I was like, how do Ashley and Cameron even do this? Like, how are they managing this? Because climbing protein mountain every day when you're at <laughs> home is hard. Doing it on the roads gotta be gotta be challenging, right? Mm -hmm. It takes a certain level of resilience and determination for sure. Um, and I, I get asked this a lot, like, how do you stay healthy while on the road? And it it really just starts everywhere. It, it's really embodied, embodying a certain lifestyle. So for me, since I was going to be traveling by myself, alcohol is something that's always been in my life. It's been around and ever present when I was growing up and I kind of stepped into it pretty early and like it never got to a point where it was like causing crazy destruction in my life. But when I actually decided to go travel full time, I was already tapering off. I was like, I'm not liking the brain fog that I'm experiencing. My mental acuity in my career was something that like I really cherished. And I noticed that in my early thirties. And I was like, you know, why am I doing this? It's so habitual. It's so ingrained in all these social activities. And I don't really make the best decisions while intoxicated. So I didn't want to become a headline when I was traveling like, American girl found fill in the blank, fill in the blank. And so that was my number one health thing that I did was I stopped drinking um, before I decided to go out in the world because I just wanted to be able to make decisions from a sound, calm, rational state of mind and not get myself into any type of precarious um, situations. And it ended up being the best decision I made for myself in my life because I switched from, you know, having to have these drinks and feeling like that was my social, like not inhibitor, but being able to promote socialness from actually being addicted to wanting to feel good. I want to wake up and feel refreshed and tackle the day because I would get hung over for multiple days. So, mm -hmm. um, that one was huge for me. Cameron, I, I quit in June, 2020 in the middle of COVID, which is crazy. Um, and Cameron is, I think a little bit over a year now. So he wow, took a little bit longer and I didn't think he was going to do it, but he did. So we're both sober now, which has been amazing. But with the health thing, I actually didn't travel with all my supplements. I just kind of went for it. And traveling is pretty stressful, especially at the pace that we move. On average, we're probably somewhere only about a week, week and a half right now. And I planned our wedding in 2022 um, all by myself while abroad. It took about nine months because it was seven days of curated events in Mykonos. And it was wonderful. But afterwards, I felt really crummy. And so I started running some tests and I ended up having my H. pylori back, which is like a stomach bug that gives a lot of acid reflux. I had hydrogen dominant SIBO, which is small intestinal bacteria overgrowth. My vitamin D levels were on the floor. So they had to give me like medical grade to get it back up. And we were spending a lot of time in like Asia, Bhutan and um, India, eating a lot of rice, not a lot of protein, eating acai bowls. And I was actually considered pre-diabetic. 
And that was like on the back half of 2022. And I'm like, okay, I'm going to need to like figure this out because I have two passions. I love to travel and I love to feel healthy, but they're kind of like oil and water. And I'm like, I need to figure out how to make these mix. So I dove down the biohacking rabbit hole hole so hard. I started with like glucose management with the glucose revolution. Um, I got like a continuous glucose monitor or CGM to actually test myself because everyone's glucose functions differently. Like it's not a one size fits all. And then I just went into like fasting and then I went into cycle thinking and then I went into hormones and then I went into like obesity. And then I listened to all of the biohackers and I slowly started experimenting on myself. And then, you know, I have about a half a suitcase, maybe three quarters of a suitcase just allocated to supplements, peptides, and all the things that like keep me healthy at this point. Do you have problems at the borders crossing with all those pills? I thought for sure I would. Um, The only time that I've been stopped is I was coming from Washington, D.C. to go to Kelowna. And it was right when the wildfires were happening last year. So I got stuck in Toronto in a connection. So I like had to go. I got through like domestic, had to go get my bag in international. And they like rechecked me because I had to stay the night. And they they're like, ma'am, we're going to need you to open your suitcase. I'm like, oh, no, (laughs) (laughs) like they're going to think I'm some like weird drug dealer. Yeah. So I open it and he's just like looking at all these baggies, like, miss, are these all yours? And I'm like, yeah. He's like, what are they? I'm like they're, they're supplements. <laughs> and he really didn't like hassle me more than that. And he let me close it and go on. So I was like super surprised, but I will tell you, I've been nervous about it. And I've been to a lot of countries now at this point and I haven't been stopped. That's amazing. So, so you're, you've leaned into your strength as a detail-oriented planner. You leaned into some other strengths around discipline. But one of the things that's really interesting that I hear you really say, and it's sort of like in between the lines, you, you know what you want to do, but as you've gone through this travel journey, you've gotten really clear about what you don't want to do. You don't want to do alcohol. You don't want to feel that way. There are other things that you don't want. Has this been part of the journey for you? Has this been has that been a conscious part of the journey? Like creating a not list of things that I'm not going to do anymore because it doesn't serve me. Is that been conscious or has it just been? Yeah. I I think it's just, um, in my twenties and early life, I was just like, go, go, go. I was the classic, like burnt myself out. I gave everything my to my companies. I was like this Salesforce guru and I really sort of excelled in my career. And I just would burn the candle at both ends. And I would also like drink coffee and take Adderall. And then at night I'm doing vodka sodas and e-cigarettes and then taking Xanax and NyQuil to go to bed and like rinse and repeat. And I'm like, I felt like I had one foot in the grave. So in my thirties, I really tried to feel things in my body after like letting go of some of these addictive um, tendencies and just through trial and error, it's like, okay, me eating that dinner at Spain in te- at 10 PM and trying to go to bed immediately, that didn't really work for me. I also track my sleep with aura ring and it, you know, it slowly drips little educational pieces at you and sleep is like my number one priority. So, you know, I, I started tailoring things to that. So it's like, you know, the clubs don't really interest me, but seeing all the sites and going on really active um, adventures excite me. So like we plan things, we go to Backroads, which is a really cool company that does these five-star like biking or multi-sport activities. So for Cameron's birthday, a couple of years ago, we did Tuscany by the sea where we're cycling every day, but staying in five-star resorts, eating at Michelin restaurants, but we're being active. Uh, We also love this group Wayfinders where we've gone to Bhutan and hiked like a mountain to 14,000 feet. I think that's like three, 4,000 meters Um, hanging out with orphan monks. But we choose that because we love the physically demanding, but then we also go super deep with personal development. Like what are our limiting beliefs? And then how do we also contribute to the local economy like and locals? So we've done Bhutan with them. We've done Uganda we're about to go do Laos and Vietnam with them in a few weeks. And we've already signed up for like Papua New Guinea. 
um, next April. So we really focus on the activity parts and staying active. Like in Iceland, we were hiking every day and going and hanging out like on glaciers with crampons or like hiking this volcano in Chile and Pucan. Like, so we build in the activity. And then I also make sure that when I'm triangulating Airbnbs or places to stay, I'm also looking at like, where is the yoga place? Where is the gym? I'm reaching out two weeks in advance. Can you take us temporarily? Can we personal train with you? Do you have group classes? How much will it cost? So I've just really made it um, a priority and then started weeding out some of these things like late night dinners. They're not going to work. Uh, yeah. At the airport, we stay active. If I can take the stairs, I'm taking the stairs. I'm not taking the walking escalator and I'm not taking the escalator or elevator. And then on planes, you know, a plane is not a free for all for drinking and eating. So we bring snacks or we try not to eat because it's actually best not to eat on planes. So there's just little things over the years that I've figured out that make me feel the best while traveling. Yeah. And it, it, so it sounds like you've got a very well-established not list, things that you're not going to do, yeah. but there are things that you're going to do. And you know, what's interesting. And, and I, and I only know this because I, I know Cameron well, you're not skimping when you're eating you're when you're going to France, you're eating the croissant at the cafe, right? You're not saying I'm not going to be a, immersed in the culture. You're going to enjoy the culture, right? Like you're not, you're not saying I'm not eating carbs anymore. That's not what you're saying. No, not at all. But like, I think when most people go on vacation and they go to France, they're like, well, I got to have the croissant like every meal or like every morning. And it's like, find the really good one. And we'll do it like maybe one or two days. And then the rest of it kind of get back on track. You know, another little hack is like when the bread basket comes, that's actually the worst thing to eat before you eat. So we kind of just like send it away. Um, a lot of times I know the appetizer is there, but you don't necessarily need to order it unless something on there, like really grabs you when I want sugar or we want sugar. We try and eat the gelato in the middle of the day. Cause that's when I'm most glucose tolerant in the morning or at night. That's actually the worst, like nightcaps and a whole bunch of sugar right before bed affects sleep. So there's just these little things where we choose to indulge, but we also try to stay on on track without like completely overdoing it. You know, so, so the brand is ever wander, right? But when you're wandering, you've got a lot of structure to it. It's not wandering structure. It's you bring the structure to where you are, right? Like, am, am I missing that? I bring a lot of structure because that's just my personality. Um, where I'm easing up is like, I'm pretty detailed about the calendar just because I want to know where we're going because we have a lot of people where it's like, we did six events in 90 days in just this last little bit. So like needing to know that plus Cameron does two events per year. Plus he wants to see his boys. So we needed a little more structure. So then I fill in the gaps with like, where would we maybe want to live? Cause that is the end goal, a few different places and what are bucket list items. So I'm all about, you know, the travel and travel in the perspective of like wandering around the world mm -hmm. with structure. I'm all about how to stay healthy on the road. So biohacking principles, and we're all about bucket list, like an adrenaline. So we publish our bucket list on, on the website for people to see. And there's also a template people can download to build their own um, bucket list. Cause I think that's, that's really so cool. important. But, but I, but I, think but I really... will, but I will say I'm trying to get better instead of planning everything. I get us to the city, but then I don't plan any of the activities or the sites until we get there. So yeah. it's a little un more unstructured that way. So it's like, it's like this ebb and flow of like structure, unstructure. <laughs> but there's a, but there's a real, but, but the structure gives you a lot of freedom. Like the structure to stay healthy gives you a lot of freedom to enjoy all the things that are there. The structure that you have around the things that you will do and not do like you're not drinking, you're watching what you're eating on the planes. You, you've got some real structure around these things, but these structures are there to protect your freedom, right? Yeah. They're there to protect how free you can feel the rest of the way. So the structure is really setting you free. And I think that's really, really powerful. You know, look, 2020 to now, there's been a lot of stress in the world. There's been a lot of pressure on the world. There's been a lot of travel restrictions in the world. And this has really been the the bulk of when you and Cameron have been doing this traveling, this ever wandering journey. 
Um, how have you, how is, how is, how have you evolved over that travel? How is that, how have you stayed focused on it despite the challenges, despite the lockdowns, despite the everything else? Have you, how, how does that work? How have you evolved? So with the COVID part there, again, like everything has their pros and cons, right? So some of the pros were that um, the places that were open, they were very empty. So like we went to Venice and that's where we got engaged. And they told us that it was at about 30% occupancy compared to like what Venice is typically like. So that was amazing. And then like I did 48, 50 cities in Mexico alone in 2022. Um, which was also spectacular. So having less travelers around was actually quite amazing. Yeah, there were protocols that we'd have to follow depending on the country. And then some countries like had crazy lockdowns, uh, Colombia being one of them. Like I remember that I could only go to certain um, like museums and stuff on even or odd days based off of the last digit of my passport. Wow. Yeah. So like if I was an even, I could only go on like Monday, Wednesday, Friday. And the other times I like the odd days, I would have to like stay in. Um, so navigating that in every country was um, interesting. The parts that weren't so great is I've had my nostrils assaulted so many times that I can't even count. And the amount of money that we've spent on COVID tests alone is insane. Yeah. Um, Getting into Chile was unbelievable in 2022. And we had a trip with Mavericks, an entrepreneurial group, to go down to Antarctica. And the level of just forethought and systems and three different portals talking to one another and approvals. And we actually had to get a COVID test right when we landed. It was crazy. Um, and then we had to have like this pass that wasn't activated to get into like restaurants into gyms people no more than like two people could sit at a table so they're breaking up families our pass actually deactivated in the middle of our trip because they wanted us to go get a booster while we're traveling around chile so there there was definitely a added level of complexity that uh was difficult but you know the trips were ultimately worth it. And we just, one step at a time, again, being resourceful and trying to go with the flow. To make yeah, it and it's all now work. no longer a trip. It's just a journey, right? It's a voyage, right? it's a voyage that you're on. Um, predict the future for me, Ashley. In, in 10 years, are you still going to be doing this? So um, do a lot of your audience know my husband, Cameron? Oh, he's a he's bit. a he's a favorite of camp of paper napping wisdom. Yeah, he's been here. Yeah, I figured. Well, he's got six books, and one of his best ones, I would say, is Vivid Vision. And he has this concept for businesses where he wants to replace all vision statements with this vivid vision. And it's essentially what your company looks like, acts like, and feels like in three years, like it already happened. But really getting that vision out of the entrepreneur's head in a copywritten way that pops off the page with beautiful graphic designs and pictures to help it make a reality. And it's like a four to five page document that then gets distributed to everyone. And then somehow it all, everyone conspires to help you make that happen. Well, we retrofitted the whole concept for our marriage. So yeah. we have one for a marriage that we did during our honeymoon in the Seychelles. So we talked about that. Where do we see this progressing? So for us, we would love to have a hub in say like three different parts of the world. One being Dubai because Cameron moved his business and his residency there. So we have to be there. Not very much, but it is a place where we will be consistently. We absolutely love Europe. So we're trying to isolate down like where in Western Europe that will be. We're still on the search. And then I'm thinking maybe like Cape Town. So we're going to go there in the middle of January to check it out. So it just looks so beautiful. We also know a lot more people that are heading down there. And the vision would be, you know, maybe having a place in three of those areas because I am, I am getting a little tired after being at this for three years. And sometimes I want off the ride, but it's like, I'm on the ride. 
we don't have a home. So we just keep going. So if we had those hubs, we would have about two months in each location when the weather is amazing to have sort of grounded stability routine. And then the other six months of the year, we would travel net new based off of like bucket list experiences and conferences. You know, what I really love is uh, one, of, one of the things I like about Cameron a lot, because uh, we're old friends, is that he walks his walk. And the fact that the two of you have joined together to build a vivid vision for the two of you, and you can speak it so beautifully and clearly is um, no surprise, but it's beautiful to see. Ashley, what a thrill to spend some time with you. Thank you for doing this. This was um, full of beautiful surprises for me to learn about. Uh, where where can people find the uh, the template for the bucket list that you were talking about? Yeah, so it uh, actually pops up when you visit the website. So ever wander travel, wander with an A, not an O, and it will just like pop up and you can actually go to our bucket list tab or the bucket list tab and it has both of our bucket lists in there for inspiration. And I do encourage you to actually like, if you do do it, do one with a hundred items. And when I did it, I went backwards in time and I was like, what do I consider in my life bucket list worthy? And I actually filled that in retroactively just to remind myself of all the cool things that I had done. Wow. That's a cool takeaway. So fill out your bucket list looking backwards yeah. and looking forwards. Beautiful. Great takeaway. Great way to end. Ashley, thank you for joining me. Yeah. Thank you.